it should work above 1.16 but I've only tested it in 1.18 so if you want to test your luck you can but I do know it works in 1.18 so it is very simple to use this is what a transmitter interface looks like of course you can make the location section and the player ID section like have more repeaters or less however you want to do it for my example and the one that I built on the server that I play on um, I just use four repeaters for the location and three repeaters for the ID because we don't have a lot of players on there and it's just easier to remember smaller IDs so the idea is that you set the repeater delays in sequential order kind of like setting them to like a computer IP almost but instead of being like 0 to 255 it's just a 1 to 4 this being 1 2 3 4 for the repeater delays so I have an example here on this receiver the location is set to 1111 and then you can see the player IDs down here are set to different combinations okay so let's say I want to teleport to this 333 slice right here that's my ender pearl of course if you have other players in your system they would have to throw their ender pearls on their slice but I'm just gonna do 333 for this one so let me set this location to 1 1 1 1 set this to 333 three. I got it all entered in so I'm just gonna hit the note block see the signal will transmit all the way through and the trapdoor flipped down. Of course, when you get here, you'll need to reload it with another Ender Pearl. This is just a very simple Ender Pearl stasis chamber. You've probably seen something like this before. So using it is very simple. You just have to remember to put in the right codes and try not to activate anybody else's. There's no defense against that. It's just like an honor system kind of thing. I haven't had any problems with that on my server, it's fine. And of course you'll need to reload it with ender pearls every time you get there, but that's a pretty simple. You just need like an enderman farm or just go fill a shulker box like with a looting sword or something. Turning it on and off is just very really straightforward too, you just like flick a lever. Of course you'll also need a chunk loader if you want it to work without players around. You can see this is within the yellow radius here, the 3x3. Three that this loader loads right here. You can just use a very simple design like this. This is one that just breaks the boat on the other side with fire. It's like all there is on the other side and then it drops in the hopper right here after getting picked up by this minecart and then just redispenses over and over again. This does need to be within the three by three instead of the five by five because it requires entities to be loaded for the under pearls and the items here that are dispensed okay so I'm gonna talk about how it works this uses concepts found by 202 name and then cubic meter expanded on it and explained it also if you want a different design that's like more compact for this but isn't as like free form with the IDs uh, I'll have a video link in the description to one that's like a 16 channel or something it's really cool i forget who made it but it's really good so this is an example of having just one player slice here this is the tileable slice that you'll repeat for each player id you want to add to a receiver so this section here is a item phase detection so what it's doing is it's detecting if these items fall in the same game tick and i'll explain why they never fall in the same game tick but when the transmitter activates, it forces them to fall in the same tick. And this detects that and then activates the ender pearl. This bit here is the player ID. You do have to put this twice and you do have to put the location twice. And I'll explain that too. But the ID here for the player, you just put it on these two rows. And you can set it to any combination of repeater length for your protocol different combinations will actually still 
have different players so you can have the same delay like you can have two slices activate in the same delay but if they have a different combination they will still count as separate IDs. Same goes for the location ID here. So these two are pretty important. These are the ordering tile sets. You need to have one of them set to 3-1, the other one set to 1-3. And you can see that's kind of why we have it duplicated. There's like two different uh, starting sets. And those do affect the later tile sets as I'll explain in a minute. This is the clock that syncs these receivers and the transmitters in the overworld. If you want to sync something in the nether, it's certainly possible, but it's like a lot more complicated. Of course, these daylight sensors will need access to the skylight, but this is pretty simple. This works during day or night and will constantly cycle itself if you have it turned on. The reason I use daylight sensors here is because they update in the same game tick globally. So you can see that even though this block is moving off of it and onto it, like blocking and letting the sunlight through, it still takes a little bit of time to update because it only updates at certain fixed intervals. And you can exploit that to have things update in the same game tick globally in the overworld, no matter where you are. Okay, so let's look at the transmitter. You can see daylight sensors here doing that. When you hit this note block, you can see it just toggles it. Um, off of one. It's not important that it resets, it just happens to reset because of the observer here, but it, it's not it's not important. And then here are the three items that it will dispense that affect the timings of the items here. And I can demonstrate that again. This one is set to 3333 three, 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 two, one. Okay. Three, two, one. All right, and I'm gonna hit this. It's gonna affect that. It'll dispense those items. Yep, this will activate, just like that. Okay, so how does it actually affect the way that items fall? Well, it's a little weird, but I'll try to explain it as simply as I can. If you need or want a more in-depth explanation, go to Two No Two Names video or Cubic Meters videos. They're much more talented than I am and will explain it a lot better. The important bit for how this works though is that items, when they start falling, they fall in one of four phases. And I'm gonna demonstrate that here. If I spawn in four items and I make them fall all at the same time, you'll notice that they actually don't start falling at the same time. See, they're kind of like staggered like that was a v-shape that time yeah it's because again they're put into one of four phases zero one two and three and that's respective to how much delay they have before they start falling if an item would be put into this phase here it wraps it back around to phase zero so it just kind of repeats that pattern i can see it again uh mm. I freeze the ticks and tick step here. See, that one started falling first. It's a little bit lower. So that got phase zero. One, two, three. So using these four phases, we can guarantee that our items in the receiver will fall on different phases. We can even guarantee that they will fall one after another. The reason that I can guarantee they will fall one after another, I'll explain in a bit, it has to do with tile set, sub tick ordering, but that, I'll explain that in a minute. Basically they fall one after another just like this. It doesn't matter what phase the cyan falls on, the magenta will always come after it. We can call that phase in for the cyan and phase in plus one for the magenta, since it always comes one phase after. So this diagram is when the transmitter is active. It dispenses three items, and using tile set sub tick ordering, it guarantees that those three items will dispense in the middle of the cyan 
and the magenta. Dispensing in the middle, you can see pushes over the magenta, wraps back around to phase in, the same phase of the cyan one, meaning that they fall in the same game tick. So even if these get pushed over somehow, they'll still fall in the same phase. See, these are both on phase two. So I can see that here, the cyan and magenta will always fall in the same game tick because those transmitters are in the middle. See, both of these got placed into phase three. So how do I guarantee that cyan and magenta will always fall after one another? And how do you guarantee that the transmitter will always be put in the middle of those two? So I do that with sub tick tile set ordering. You can see here we have the repeaters of the cyan, the magenta, and the transmitter. Here's cyan, 1, 3, magenta, 3, 1. The transmitter is set to 2 and 2. If I hit this command block, you'll see that these guys, 1, my bad, 3, 2, 1. It'll actually say 1, 2, 3 every single time, even though these guys are being powered in the same game tick. 1, 2, 3. One, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah. Because of the way that Minecraft orders redstone operations, we can guarantee that things will happen in a certain order, even if they happen in the same tick by using sub tick ordering. For example, this whole chain here, the cyan to the location to the player ID, this is all one big chain that has a certain order in a tick. And yes, all of these tiles affect it. However, they do affect it in a certain order. So here's a setup describing what I mean. On this branch, we have the cyan, the 1, 3. This branch, we have magenta, 3, 1. And then we have it again, 1, 3, 3, 1. 1, 3, 3, 1, off of both of them. So we have two 1, 3s and two 3, 1s. If I press this, You'll notice something interesting. So the cyan and the magenta are the first numbers here, and the four branches are the last numbers. You'll see that the four branches actually are grouped next to each other. You would think that the cyan and magenta would be grouped next to each other, and they wouldn't alternate like this, but they do alternate. So you can actually diagram these in reverse. So let me put one, three, Three, one, and these are the last branches in that sequence. You can make a tree diagram of sorts like this. You can see how it kind of operates in reverse. So the later that a tile set comes in a redstone sequence, the more priority it has with how like different tile sets are grouped together in sub tick ordering. So for example, if I wanted to select this branch right here, I would actually build it in reverse. I would build the groups, the tile sets in reverse. So in the game, I would actually build one, three, and then three, one. That branch specifically would be this one. So one, three, three, one. And I built that in reverse to how it's grouped. Now I know this is probably not the best explanation, but the important takeaway is that different repeater delays, even if they happen in the same tick, will affect a redstone order of operations and how it's ordered in reliable ways. Like you can basically force it to order in certain ways. So by using that, we guarantee that our items will fall one after another on different phases. Another important thing is that even if items are like dropped into the world, like at random, it will actually not affect the phases of these guys at all. It may push their phases like this, right? Like here's an example where say two items are dropped in the same tick as the sign in the magenta. But it's not a redstone operation. And if it was a redstone operation, 
it would have to have the exact same sequence of events that these guys have. And the sequence of events here, these tile sets are so specific and like arbitrary. Why would you ever have this in a farm or anything? If you actually do end up getting false signals from a farm or something, because you have a really specific chain of events like this, that, dis that just happens to dispense an item at the end, then you can just change your uh, protocol or choose a different ID or something. I mean, it's not that big of a problem. I'm not gonna do a build tutorial specifically. I will have Lightmatica schematics in the description and a world download if you wanna take a look at it. And this is really just it for the player ID slices of course, you just stack them next to each other like this in either direction. It doesn't matter however you want to do it and repeat this design and, you know, change the delays to the right ID. An important note is that these need to be unstackables. If they are not unstackables, it might stack with a slice next to it and it won't actually fall into the hopper and that will mess stuff up. So these do have to be unstackables. You can put whatever you want in this dropper, it doesn't matter, because it just goes directly into this hopper when it does activate. Also, these no blocks might be a little loud, so put something above them or turn your block sounds off. In this last one, you know, you will have to have something blocking it so the items don't just fling out and fly out and ruin the detection. Make sure that your daylight sensors have access to the sky some way and make sure that you have a chunk loader like this if you want it to work without players around okay that's it that's basically all i got i hope this is like helpful somewhat if you play on a server a side note if you do want to build this on uh like single player i don't know how well chunk loaders work in single player like if they just stop working if you reload the world but you know, you don't have to have player IDs if you're in single player. So you can just get rid of the location ID here and then just move it here, right? And just have this cyan and magenta directly power the, uh, you know, thing here. And that would look, you know, kind of like this, right? And then your clock would be here and it would just power it like this. Instead of having player IDs, that would work. Of course, I dis did design this specifically to be tileable and like real compatible with servers. So you can just add players to it like this. And it's very flexible. You can set the location ID to whatever you want, the player IDs, do whatever you want. I mean, wh whatever, you get the idea. That's the design uh, schematics in the description. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. The thing in the fridge is definitely not human meat.